back to Why in the Morning. If it's Tuesday, it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 Channel. Is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira. Is where you can find me across all my social. In this particular session, we dive into an interview that looks at renewable energy. And uh, in studio, I am joined by Mark Kinguru. Kinguru, who is the founder of Badi uh, Systems. Systems. Right. Thank you very much for creating time to be with us. Thank you for having me, Michelle. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Karibu sada. Asante Happy sana. New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> so starting us off, tell us more about what your business is solving in the market, in the space of energy sector. So our business is aimed at uh, uh, providing renewable energy and making it uh, available where the grid is not present because uh, Energy is not uh, the energy demand is not enough in Kenya. Uh, what Kenya Power provides is not sufficient. So we look into uh, making that energy readily available and mm. uh, also making it cheap. Okay, so I, I like the fact that you've mentioned the fact that uh, uh, we need to ensure that uh, other other you know other options apart from just uh, uh, Kenya Power. Uh, they're actually cheap, but when you look at solar energy, it's, yes, it is cheap, but it's quite expensive when it comes to um, uh, the initial acquiring of probably the solar panels. So how can we ensure that uh, uh, we get to use uh, solar energy in the wide space? Well, first of all, uh, one thing that we can do is that we can uh, introduce a system whereby uh, the community can come together uh, for example, in a village, and uh, uh, you know, decide to contribute towards building one one centralized system that can be used by by people in a, a certain locality. Okay, so how did you start the business? Let's 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 go back to you know the initial point. How did how did uh, body system all began? How did it start? Well, Body Systems uh, was founded in 2015. Myself and a friend of mine came together and we decided to register a company. And uh, once we did, we did get business ideas immediately. So uh, we, we stayed just with the name for a while. And then later on, uh, I came to, we came to identify a gap, a gap in the market. So we decided that maybe we can start uh, 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 providing energy. Uh, yes, that's how. All right. And uh, what is your niche in the market? Because here we have other companies that offer the probably the uh, same uh, uh, services that uh, Body System does. So what is your niche in the market? What makes you unique? I would say workmanship. Mm -hmm. We are very professional. Um, we are licensed. We do very good work. Uh, first of all, when we get a customer, it's not all about selling a product to the customer. We go to the customer, we educate the customer, we do the site survey, so we are sure when we are sizing the system, we are giving them what is going to suit to meet their need. Uh, so our site survey is both uh, educational and also serves in you know, sizing the system according to how the, the client needs it. Okay, Mark. For someone who's watching this conversation and they want to get into the energy sector, probably provide the same sort of services or different when it comes to renewable energy. What does it take to uh, to run uh, this kind of a business and what educational background does one need to have? Well, first of all, I would say it requires passion. Passion comes first. And then yeah, of course, you need to have a, a, a technical background. I am a strong champion for TVET because TVET is a vehicle for um, a sustainable development uh, and it's also a, a vehicle for uh, social equity. So you need to have uh, interest for hands-on hands -on jobs you need to have a technical background, and then you need to have the passion. Mm -hmm. So, and how does uh, solar impact like uh, my property value from a client, and uh, I'm looking at uh, renewable energy solution and solar panel as one of my options? 
Well, first of all, there are so many advantages of solar energy. One, it is renewable. Uh, you get it today, you get it tomorrow, as long as the sun is shining. Second, uh, it is diverse. Uh, it has diverse applications. You can use water, uh, solar to pump water, to heat, to, to heat water, to generate electricity. And then uh, solar uh, has a very minimal maintenance cost. Once you install solar, you only need to maybe do cleaning of panels once in a while. And uh, there are no other costs that are involved. All right. Earlier on, let me take it back. Earlier on, we mentioned that uh, solar energy it's uh, it's an affordable way to to incorporate probably this uh, renewable uh, energy uh, compared to Kenya Power. As you said, mentioned earlier on. Let's look at. Uh, we said it's quite expensive when it comes to the initial uh, acquisition. So how can we go about? Uh, we're even going about cheaper ways of, of, of how to acquire it. Let's look at financial solutions. Are there loans that can be uh, are there to actually help clients or potential clients to acquire them? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I think you can start building a solar system. They are scalable systems. Okay. You don't have to, uh, to build a big system from the word go. You can start with a small system and, you know, go as an incremental plan. But they are microfinance institutions that provide loans and uh, are even directed towards the growth of solar. Uh, from where you're seated, uh, how can you advise like a potential client who is looking forward to uh, meeting up on a, with a solar installer? How can you ensure that they are credible and certified and not get duped? Well, first of all, uh, if uh, you wish to engage someone to uh, build a solar system for you, uh, there are people who will tell you, will size a system for you even before they have seen your, 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 your demand or what, what you need to use the solar system for. You need to uh, conduct a site service. So first of all, if someone uh, is sizing for your system that they have not seen, then you know that is not a qualified person. Second, you need even to check their academic background. Are they licensed? What, is the, uh, what projects have they done? They need to show you their previous projects, mm -hmm. uh, and definitely uh, you, you will not. You will not. Uh, be, it's it's possible to tell if someone is not qualified, even when you interact with them. All right. Let's look at uh, the services that your company offers uh, in details, because I I looked at your uh, portfolio. You guys offer a couple of services. It's not just solar energy, and there's a couple of them. So take us through your services in details. Well, as I mentioned, I come from a, a, a diverse uh, technical background. Yes. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in IT, and I have a, a diploma in electrical engineering. So, Bali Systems was founded on, on that uh, foundation of a diverse technical capacity. So we offer renewable energy systems, uh, solutions, uh, solar home systems, of grid uh, systems, uh, 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 energy storage systems. We also offer IT solutions like, uh, for example, intrusion detection systems, CCTV, electric fences, mm -hmm. and we are, all, we are qualified in all that. Oh, it's a full house. Yes, full house. <laughs> all right. So how do you ensure that the company offers quality services, com uh, considering that uh, there's a couple of, in the full house, the couple of uh, services and products that you offer your clients. So how do you ensure that it's quality for you guys? Well, because it's not a one-man show, yes. I, I ensure that uh, mm -hmm. we hire a qualified personnel. All right. and, and, and we go through a very rigorous training uh, exercise before we engage someone. We have to go for very, uh, several installations with, with someone that we, we decided to engage and we have to show them what it takes um, to give uh, quality output. Mm -hmm. And then after we have done a job, we don't leave it there. We follow up with the client to know how is the system responding. Uh, uh, and if there are any issues that arise, then we, we also ensure that we follow up. Okay. And how are you guys, uh, in terms of marketing, what's your marketing strategy to just put your name out in the space of energy sector? Currently, social media marketing, that's what we are doing most. 
we don't have uh, per se a marketing department but uh, I think uh, social media marketing is, uh, is sufficient and also even the quality of work that we do is work that uh, speaks for itself yeah, because most of even our jobs are referrals. We do a job and someone likes it and they refer their friends. Right. Yeah. A couple of financial lessons uh, since 2015. That's a couple of, I'm so sure it, it has been roller coaster. So I'd like to hear a couple of financial lessons that you've learned along the way as a well, business. Uh, first of all, it's not easy to start a business. Uh, it's very difficult to say that uh, you're waiting for, uh, to gather enough capital to, to, to start a business. I was employed before I decided to get into business and uh, it never there's no time that came that I said I have enough money to start the business in fact I jumped off the cliff so they say you jump you jump off the cliff then you develop wings along the way mm -hmm. so employment was not doing any any, any better I decided to quit uh, maybe I, I'm not advising everyone to follow my model uh, because you need at least to have uh, capital when you're starting business, but you'll never have enough. Uh, yes. Okay, that is so true. Con considering that uh, um, there's this uh, uh, motivational speak and also a serial entrepreneur in South Africa known as Busin the Bequire. He says the same thing that you'll never have, have enough capital to start. Just, just yeah, start sure. whatever you have. And just. No, Indeed. Jump. Yes. <laughs> and how was the transition for you from being in the employment space to now just uh, getting into your something of your own, your business, something that you love? Well, it was a very difficult experience. It was not easy. Um, I left employment in uh, about October 2019, and it was not easy towards the end of that year. Mm, business does, doesn't just come because you need to, to learn what happens in the field. You need to get your hands dirty. You need to learn from people who have been there and don't be choosy. If someone tells you to go with them to the field and, and learn, even sometimes you don't get a penny, you just go and learn. Uh, and after I quit employment, uh, about three, four months, then that is when uh, COVID came and uh, things were getting even worse. Luckily, uh, uh, the fact that people now were at home, they wanted to work from home, uh, there was that need for uh, energy and uh, in surplus because, uh, you know, uh, our Kenya power is not reliable. And so many companies now had to install uh, uh, backup systems, solar backup systems for their employees would now start working from home. So that is how things now started. So COVID may have had a negative impact for some people, but it also had a positive impact for others. Oh, it was like a two sword. There was the side of positivity and negative Double aspect of it. Sword, yes. Double sword, yeah. So uh, let's look at, you mentioned something earlier on about uh, when starting off and just be willing to learn. Take us through, uh, did you have someone who held your hand along the way, someone like a mentor who showed your way through uh, in the space of just a business aspect of it? Did you have a mentor? Yes, I did have a mentor. Not, not so much in the business aspect of okay. it but on the technical aspect of it, right. I was ready to, to learn. I was ready to strip down my titles mm -hmm. <laughs> from my previous employer. And uh, that person is uh, someone who has been in the field for quite long. He's very well skilled. He took me through what it takes, uh, w what is needed for you to be sharpened in this field. And I was, I, I, you know, I. I was very, very willing, and uh, he's not only uh, he's not alone. There are other mentors, but there's one who has been very pivotal. Yes. Right, and I understand that it is one thing to be with your mentor talking about uh, learning a couple of things theoretical in a theory format, then heading to the field to actually do the job that uh, you guys were talking about. So take us through your first project, and uh, how was the response uh, from the market? Well, uh, let me start by saying, I said I'm a, a strong uh, champion for TVET okay. education. 
And this is because I, 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 did, I, I took my degree first. All right. And my diploma came later, even when I was employed. And uh, what I learned is that uh, theoretical knowledge is very different from what you find in the field. Nobody teach, teaches you uh, some skills in class. You only know them on paper. Once you get out the field, it's different. So I have done several projects. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure I can even uh, trace my first one, but I, I, maybe I can talk about my latest. Mm -hmm. My latest project was uh, in Naivasha. It was commissioned about two, two days ago. And it was a solar water pumping project. It went very well, the client was happy. Uh, and I can say, I, 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 I think I dedicate that project to, to my mentor, the one I just mentioned, because we, uh, all, all, all the, uh, the skills that I applied mm. are, are what I learned from right. my mentor. What are, what are a couple of uh, uh, steps or just a process you guys are putting in place to scale up the business uh, in a couple of uh, years? No time frame, I'm giving you your space to just put on a type, time frame, right? Being a new year, uh, measures that you guys have put up to just scale up the business. Mainly, I would say that uh, we are looking to uh, words enhancing our technical uh, capacity because we have a backlog of jobs that we are not able to sometimes even meet deadlines because the jobs are there, but you don't want to give them to just anyone. You want to give jobs to people who are qualified. So uh, I don't think uh, it's much a problem of lack of jobs there, there. but do we have uh, the, the right people to, to do those jobs? So sometimes we're forced to File them up, do them slowly, because that is the capacity that we have right now. So what we are doing is uh, training more people uh, so that we have capacity to do even bigger jobs in the future. All right. Uh, a couple of challenges that you've been facing as a business? Well, as you said, renewable energy is uh, expensive. The, the initial cost of setup is, is quite expensive. So some clients come expecting uh, it's just something they can do. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and then they find you, you give them the actual position and they just share the idea. They say, no, let's try that another day. That is one of the challenges. Uh, number two, uh, the government last year, about mid last year, slapped VAT on solar uh, products. Uh, it was not there before, so VAT made it even more expensive. And uh, number three, uh, our EPRA was uh, making proposals to, uh, to, 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 to try and restrict the growth of, uh, or suppress the growth of the solar industry because of introducing so many uh, regulations, license fees, uh, and, and, and that, uh, even though it hasn't gone through, would be a major, major blow. So how can we curb the problem when it comes to the challenge, rather? How can we curb the challenge of the experts? Like, how expensive it is to uh, initially acquire uh, solar energy? How can we curb that, that challenge? Well, first of all, maybe the government can uh, give offer incentives on solar because uh, they should try and make solar more accessible as opposed to make it uh, inaccessible. And then they can maybe uh, even scrap VAT uh, from solar. Then uh, people can embrace the idea of uh, sort of a community-based community, community based, uh, approach mm -hmm. towards uh, having solar. Because if I do it alone, it's very expensive. If we join hands, oh, yes. it is half the cost. Absolutely. It becomes yes. very cheaper when you're together. Indeed. Uh, makes sense. Makes sense. So how can guys find you on social media if they want to keep up this conversation, if someone wants to get in this space or when it comes to energy solution, potential client? Yes. How can people find you on social, med social media? 
Well, uh, I'll reach out to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys can reach me through um, Facebook and Instagram. We have a, a page. Uh, uh, we have pages for both uh, Instagram and, uh, and and Facebook. We have a website www.bodysystems.co.ke, and if you if you look for body underscore systems, you're gonna find it. All right. Yes. Thank you very much, Mark uh, Kinguru. Yes. Got it right. <laughs> You've got Finally. it right. Finally. <laughs> Thank you very much for creating time to be with us and talking about renewable energy. And uh, guys, back at home, remember you can follow this conversation across all our social media handles at y 254 channel at Michelle Ashira. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you for having me. All right. So make sure you don't touch that down. We'll be right back with so much right here on Why in the Morning. If it's Tuesday, it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 channel. is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira. is where you can find me across all my social. We'll be right back.